I think the MBA can play a very important role in shaping the future of business because we're living in a world where truth doesn't seem to matter anymore. We're talking about fake news, the sort of post-truth universe where truth becomes a malleable thing. And I think uh, educators, academics, writers, intellectuals have a very important role to play to make sure that ethical behaviour maintains its, uh, its uh, role in public life. Excellence in the business leaders of tomorrow is a very important uh, thing because these are people who are going to be having a very big influence in the world and um, we acquire our ethical values at an early stage. It's education that gives us that. So when we're learning, when we're studying for our degree, that's when we absorb these values and that's why it is so important. The leadership styles that I've seen in the various places I've lived in have uh, varied um, dramatically uh, from conciliators, um, Jimmy Carter certainly, um, to people who've ruled with an iron fist. I've lived in the Soviet Union, I've lived in uh, Russia, so I've seen people like uh, Leonid Brezhnev, I just caught the end of his reign. Uh, the interesting thing is going forward now, we've just seen the inauguration of Donald Trump and it'll be uh, absolutely fascinating to see what sort of leadership style he adopts. I don't think my advice is very important to aspiring leaders in business, but uh, as a general rule, um, I've always used the, the maxim that um, it's important to get on in life, but it's important to do it in a, a, an honest and uh, open way. And that um, if we tell lies, if we trample on other people, we may get ahead, but I think in the end, we're going to regret it. I think in this country, we've benefited from cultural and ethnic diversity. We've seen waves of immigration that have brought great benefits to this country. And I think it's a sad day when we see a president of the Uni United States talking about building a wall to keep out uh, people from Mexico. I think it's a sad day, in my opinion, when we see British people voting for that little England uh, um, isolationism that Brexit seems to carry with it. I hope that we can get past that. Well, we've just seen Donald Trump being inaugurated as President of the United States, and I think it's sent a shiver down the spines of many people. On a hopeful note, what I would say is that I was there in 1993 when uh, Bill Clinton was inaugurated and there was a great aura of uh, hope around that. We saw Maya Angelou reading about mourning in America and everybody thought that uh, America was going to be on the up and up and we saw how the Clinton presidency failed eventually. So perhaps the perverse hope might be that uh, Donald Trump is being inaugurated under such a cloud that actually the, uh, the opposite vector might take him to uh, bigger and better things. I worked for the government of Tony Blair for five years and four and a half years of those were fantastic. We had a great time, we did well, and I think we brought in some very good and important measures for the country. The last six months were dreadful. I fell out with them. Uh, then they, I have to say, people that I got on very well with, Alistair Campbell and people in his department, uh, became very um, ruthless in the way they dealt with me. Uh, but, you know, I come from the north of England. Um, I'm a sort of Bolshe northerner and, uh, you know, I don't knuckle under to those things. Things. I try to stick to what I believe. I think it is the best way. I mean, we can't all do it all the time, but actually I think, um, you know, I'd find it hard to live with myself if I did anything that uh, didn't accord with my principles. You know, every day, day in, day out, we all have to make little decisions and we can't all be sort of completely upright and moral, but uh, I think it's worth giving it a try. I think we've seen a massive revolution in the nature of uh, the media in uh, Western society. Um, a few years ago, everybody relied on a small number of outlets, um, newspapers, television stations for their news. And broadly, these were outlets that checked the veracity of what they were putting out. Uh, what we have seen is a sort of mushrooming of uh, independent news sources now, social media, the internet, um, uh, radio stations, and uh, they are all putting out their own brand of the news which in theory is a great thing. Uh, but what they don't have is that sort of um, fact-checking that uh, the big news organisations had. So we have a vast variety of news, but a lot of it is uh, what Donald Trump would call fake news. I think for a journalist, the rule number one is still be in the right place at the right time because, um, you know, from a career point of view, you make your name when you've got a, a big story. Social media, of course, means that uh, events are reported um, all over the world at every hour of the day and night. Uh, what you don't get, though, is the sort of um, uh, standard of uh, professionalism, the standard of uh, fact-checking, uh, people who film things on their uh, mobile camera great, it's fantastic to see the footage, but um, I'm just slightly dubious about the way that some of that is misused on social media nowadays. 
Well, the Chinese say it's uh, blessed are those who live in interesting times, and I think we're certainly living in interesting times. Uh, we've seen big changes uh, in the nature of the media, in the nature of politics. Uh, we've seen some very colorful leaders uh, rise to the top of the political tree. The two most important people clearly going forward are going to be uh, Donald Trump in the United States and Vladimir Putin in Russia. And I think uh, I'll be watching that relationship with a very close eye because that's going to determine uh, how the Western world at least uh, runs its future. Donald Trump thinks he can do a deal with Vladimir Putin. Well, good luck to him. Uh, a lot of uh, Western leaders have uh, thought they could do a deal uh, with the Kremlin in the past and many of them uh, have come a cropper. But Trump, maybe, you know, let's give him a chance. Let's see if he can uh, do what he says. But um, to me, it looks a little bit like a, a spider and a fly. And I think uh, Putin probably is the spider.